Hey guys, it's Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. Man, I've got a banger today. We're going to learn how to do 10-ton hammer by Machine Head. Now, I used to watch these guys live all the time back in the 90s in my my metal days and uh, going to shows a lot. And they are one of the best live bands out there. Uh, I recommend checking them out if you can. And this is my favorite song by them. It's probably it's not their biggest song. Uh, so if you've never heard of Machine Head, this is not their most popular song. It's pretty popular uh, with their fans and stuff, but uh, um, it's my favorite song. So we're gonna start here with my first Machine Head song. And maybe we'll do more if you guys are into it. Now, before I get into it, please subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Ring the notification bell, like and comment and all that good stuff. It really helps uh, the YouTube algorithms wars and watch the videos. Just put it on the background even if you don't like the song. It really helps. And if you really want to support what I do on YouTube, and hopefully you do, and you want these videos to continue, check out my Guitar Academy. You can see a link to that in the description below. It gives you full access to all my courses, for courses for complete beginners to more advanced courses on technique, improvisation, ear training, theory, guitar tone. And I'm there every weekend, which is live streams for Academy members, so it's a lot of fun. Please come join us. All right, so let's get into the tune. Now, the only bummer about this song is the tuning. Typically, Machine Head plays in, I think, you know, online research, uh, mostly drop B, all right? So mm, you might not have a guitar that can do that. Hopefully you do. I have some extra thick strings on this thing, so I can. Um, so, but this one is not completely drop B. So you would kind of put your guitar on drop B and then you're gonna change one string um, to get that har this harmonic that kind of dominates a lot of the song. And um, so it'll make more sense as we go through the lesson. But um, so to, what drop B basically is, is you're turning, tuning the entire guitar down first, down a minor third, all right? So that means like an E becomes a C sharp, a B becomes a G sharp, and all that good stuff. And then once you get in there, you take the low string and tune it down another whole step. I'll, I'll read these notes out in a second for you guys. And that gives you drop B, so you can kind of play those one finger power chords and stuff. Then from there, this is where they do this, I think on just a select few songs, um, they take the what was the G string that they had tuned down to E, and they tune it back up a half step to F. Why did they do that? Well, it creates a tritone from the low B string to this. So now it's B and F. So when you have the, you that crazy harmonic. That really dominates the song. They achieve that by tuning that string to an F. So the, all the strings together is a low B, then an F sharp. The A string is tuned down to an F sharp. The D string is tuned down to a B. And now this G string is tuned down to an F. It's that one little anomaly. They want it to be dissonant like that. That's part of the effect. All right, and then we have the uh, B string tuned down to G sharp. And then the E string tuned down to C sharp. Now we are ready to rock. Hopefully you guys got into that tuning. And we're gonna start here with this intro that I played. And this is a very dissonant type of... Now, going into that, you hear a harmonic, uh, some feedback. So this feedback sounds like it starts with hitting, uh, this is right before that riff comes in at the intro you hear, it's basically song starts with feedback. And it sounds like it's coming up. Like you get hit, hit a harmonic on the B string. By the way, I'm gonna call it a B string, you know it's, it's a G sharp string, but I'm gonna name the strings as if they're standard tuning so it doesn't confuse us here. But if you have your guitar on the right tuning, it, it all works out. So the B string, the harmonic at 12th fret, it sounds like that's going as the, recording comes on and that's feeding back. And that's what you hear and then we go into that intro. Now this intro, very, very dissonant. Uh, thank God for live videos to kind of see exactly what's going on and how they do this. So we're gonna start with this. Sorry. So this is the fifth fret on the high E string along with the ninth fret there on the B string. So you fit those two together and then come down to one, two, three, four on the, you can hit that's just a low B, but I kind of like to kind of hit the, the fifth in there as well. So hit the A string. 
So we have this. So you kind of hit this, these, and then four hits, and then do this again. And then, so basically three times. And then we do, which is the power chord, so it's just a one finger power chord. Uh, the third fret of the bottom three strings there. Then six, then five. So we have this. So that's how it's played the very first time. The remaining three times is played slightly differently. And I believe the reason why, not only does it sound cool this way as well, um, it makes it easier to go from that rip, to those little power chords, instead of jumping back to this crazy chord up here, this big stretch. It starts first with this. So it's the first hit now is this, this is the first chord. So it's a sixth fret on the G and then ninth fret there on the B. So you can see them do that as well. And then the rest of it's the same as the first time through. So it's just that first chord instead of this, it's this, and then the second and third of the, like the original one. But the rhythm's the same. So we have this so far. Beat. All right, so that's four times through the riff, and remember, the second, third, and fourth time, start with that chord instead of that. But just the beginning of the song, the first time you hear it, you hear it like that. All right, so now coming out of that riff, we have this little octave thing that happens, and it's uh, you're gonna play this octave shape a little bit differently than you usually do octaves because of the tuning of that, um, that third string there. Um, since it's tuned up a half step, we don't need to do the full two fret octave, it's just a one fret. So uh, we're gonna be playing the eighth fret on the A string and the ninth fret there on the G. So you play that. So it's just going back and forth, two frets down to the sixth fret and then back up. So. So just like that. Mostly just slides. And then you're gonna slide down into that main riff. So the main riff, now this is what we call a, a monster groove. Um, I love this riff. Um, so it's just first right on the low, and it was the B string to the open. And just kind of just. So you just want to get to where you can hum that rhythm, um, and then it's just one zero, one zero, one zero, it's just back and forth between the two. All right, and then we get to the verse. Now this is where we're going to use this harmonic. Now you're going to see people to say that they tune to 435 hertz and all that stuff. That's fine, they might do that, doesn't matter. It, that wouldn't change the configuration of the strings. All the strings are being affected by that different hertz. They're all being um, affected equally. Um, but what you're hearing in the song is a, uh, that tritone. So you need the strings tuned to that tritone. Just tuning everything down to 435 hertz ain't gonna get it. So anyway, just l let you guys know that you're gonna hear different arguments about what's going on here. Pretty positive just by watching them physically play it live the only way you can do it like they do it live is to have this G string tuned up tuned to an F okay so now the riff is this the for the uh, uh, verse So that's gonna start with just that one finger power chord at the third fret, and then the open, and then a quick muted hit on the low, uh, low B string open. 
And then you're gonna jump up and grab the harmonic. Now this harmonic in question is at the fifth fret of the G. Just like that ring. They use this in multiple songs. So after, uh, after repeating it like four times, you're gonna go, so a little chromatic thing. So you're gonna do that chord up front slide from three to six, and then hit it, slide down to five, hit the fives, slide down to four, just hit the four, slide down to three. And then start the riff again. So after the second time, it goes to what I'm calling the pre-chorus. I'm saying that there's two pre-choruses and then actually two bridges in this song. I call them this way because I'm just not smart enough to come up with a different name for them. They're, they're, they both sound like pre-choruses. Now this first pre-chorus is my favorite part of the song. It's when the, the normal singing comes in. It's really melodic, but it's really cool. It looks like this. So, pretty simple to play. You're gonna hit that down, down, up on the second fret there on the that, uh, low B string. And then just with the bar over to the second fret on the D string. So, down, up, down, up. So. And then what we're gonna do is move it up to the third fret here on the low string. Same down, down, up. And then on that D string again, it's two, 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 zero. So we have this. B. And then we get to what I call pre-chorus number two. Gotta jump into that main riff each time. It's very, very cool. All right, so this, uh, pretty simple here. Just the power chord of the second fret there on the bottom three strings with a couple of muted hits on that low string in between. And then up to the third fret. So in. And then we're gonna have a couple of hits on the open muted strings before we start over. So it is. Just three times there, and then you're gonna come up here and do this octave, but here he keeps changing the spot that he plays these octaves at. The first time you hit, heard it in the, heard, heard it in the intro was here. But here, now he's gonna start it at the 10th fret there. So same shape, 10th fret here on the A, 11th on the G. So just like that, same, same riff though. And then back to that main riff. Back to the same verse. So same verse, same pre-chorus number one with the vocals, the, 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 the kind of normal clean melodic vocals, and then the same pre-chorus number two, except this pre-chorus, the second. Doesn't end with those octaves. Um, here we're just gonna jump to bridge number one after this. So just skip those last octaves that we did before. And First time we played that pre-chorus, the second time you will not play that. Uh, you're just gonna jump straight to the uh, the bridge. Now the bridge has one, has two guitar parts going on, on the bridge here. One of them is pretty tricky to do. The other one's very easy. So the very easy one is just this. So it's just. Open the first room. But 
Along with that, we have this riff, which is much more difficult to get. All right, so that right there is gonna show you another area where it's only possible to play that with that string tuned to F. Um, so I'm gonna start with that low, that low string, and then you're gonna slide into the uh, seventh fret of the, the D string, and then you're gonna catch that harmonic there that we did earlier in the verse, real quickly off the fifth fret on the G. And then come over to the sixth fret there on the A, so with this. Kind of continue this riff again, back to the slide of the seven on the D, and then the open. I'm sorry, the, the harmonic at the fifth fret there on the G, and then that open E again, or the yeah open E. So. that harmonic and then immediately just hit the open string and that's what you hear ringing is this open string kind of when the bass solo starts coming in you should kind of hear this this string kind of feedback and everything and then over the bass solo you're gonna hear some just some kind of just mute the strings and so that's what's going on the guitars during the bass solo. You hear those come in occasionally, it's just quick down up with heavily muted strings. All right, so then we, now we get to what I call bridge number two. It's gonna start with some pick scrapes, uh, kind of down. And then it goes into this riff that's played eight times and it has this little tremolo octave pick, uh, tremolo picked octave thing at the end. So it looks like this. Just, uh, not too much, kind of keep a loose wrist and stuff, so we'll talk about that when we get there. The riff is pretty simple leading up to that. We got So it's just those power chords of the, uh, just two, three, six, open, and then two, so. Repeat, and there's kind of like a muted thing in between each one. So you do that riff eight times, and then we go into this tremolo picking thing. So I'm, now I'm holding the octave here, just at one spot here. Eighth fret there on the A, ninth on the G. And you want to kind of just like, kind of a tip when you're when you're doing tremolo picking on across multiple strings, it kind of helps to arc your wrist a little bit. So if you're down here, it can be harder. If you arc your wrist, you kind of like can just kind of uh, swing the hand off this. It feels like the the hand is just kind of swaying off the end of your arm here. So it's just kind of, so you gotta create like a loose feel and then. So it's kind of, got to be as shallow as possible and not just kind of brush the strings. All right. It's a good little exercise too to keep that wrist loose. So it does that for four measures. And then we get back to pre-chorus number one again, my favorite part. Especially this one, because they extended it, play it twice as long this time. So that's played twice as long as the previous ones. Then we go to pre-chorus number two here. It says right at the end of the song. And it has a little different ending. A uh, little tremolo picking on some octaves as well. Looks like this. Mm. 
So it's just that same riff. But we have these little leading it back to that main riff. So I'm doing that octave here at the 10th fret on the A, 11th on the G. I'm gonna take it up to 13 on the A, 14 on the G. Slide down. Do that main riff to the end of the song, and that thing, that that main riff just hits you as soon as it comes in. And then uh, I love just the that that pre-chorus number one, the vocals is just very 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 cool. So great song, uh, a lot of fun to play. Just get it in the tuning. I know the tuning is kind of a bummer. You have to have a guitar that maybe has some thicker strings so you can uh, get it in that tuning. But once you do, if you're a guy that plays a lot of metal, you probably guy or gal that plays metal, um, uh, you probably have a guitar that's kind of set up for these types of tuning. So get into it and then uh, rock out, man. It's a fun one to play. All right. I'll see you guys again soon for guitarlessons365.com.